Welcome to Big Text Variables are from Dinosaurs. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, as the title of this video implies that if you're still using Big Text, I might consider you a dinosaur. Um, so let me explain. Uh, so Big Text was a thing that came way, way back in the early versions of NAB. Um, at that point, the text variable in 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 BC, sorry, the text variable in NAB, the text variable in Navision, was uh, around a thousand characters. And if you needed to do something that was more than a thousand characters, you either have to get creative with arrays of text or um, streams or automation controllers or stuff like that. Um, and this was also the, you know, the time of XML. Uh, and XML was text, lots of text. So we kind of needed a way to handle text that were larger than a thousand characters. So we got big text and big text um, had the ability to go and convert from blobs to text and from text to blobs and you could build up large strings so it was pretty cool it was pretty nice um, and it served a lot of purposes at the time now fast forward 10 versions or more uh, 12 versions or more something like that um, we still have big text and i still see people using it uh, and I'm not sure why, and and maybe because of old habits, uh, and I know they are hard, hard to get rid of. So so the purpose of this video is to kind of tell you that there's no reason to use big text. Big text will give you more trouble than it gives you benefits. Um, so let's let's take a look at it. Here is a simple. Uh, I just started the uh, the AL go command and got a new extension and I created myself a big text variable. So what can we do with a big big text variable? Well, let's take a look at it. So we can add text to it. So if we do you know something like this um, and I know yeah this is this is small text but but otherwise we'll be here all night um so now we have a big text uh, and we can uh, let's see if we run this with a debugger on uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. i wonder what screen that is gonna show up on that's let's see this one perfect Let's see if we get a breakpoint or not. Come on, BC. There we go. We got a breakpoint, so let's take a look at. So when we when we're inspecting a variable in in the uh, debug, we have three options. The first one is of course to add it to the watch list over here. Uh, the second one is to to hover which sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it's best to hover over the dot for some reason. Uh, see, this does nothing, but if I hover over the dot, it works. We can also down here at the um, at the debug console, at there's, there's a command prompt here. And, and there's actually, what we can do here is that if I write the, the name of a variable and press enter, I get the value of it. So we can see that this has Eric and a space. And if I fast forward and I do this again, we have the entire thing. It's also up here. So nothing special about that. Uh, but what's interesting about this is that this exact pattern is close to an anti-pattern at this point. Uh, and what do I mean by that? I mean that if we go back to and look at, well, we'll go back. If we go into the documentation, Microsoft even warns about this, that 
If you do this with a lot of strings, you are going to get a lousy performance because this is actually based on a string. So what happens behind the scene that if, if we change this into a, a, a text and then we did the same thing. So we could say that s equal Eric and then we do s equal s plus space and then s equal a s plus Hogard. What happens here is that the system will allocate the first string and assign it to s. Then the system will allocate, grab s and the space and copy that into a new representation. So we're getting the entire chunk of data copied. Then we do that again. So we end up copying all the stuff that we had to create a new um, string. Now, I know this is only three lines uh, and, and th this is impossible to measure from a performance perspective. But if, if you're adding a lot of big text, big text, big text, um, then you easily end up in, in, in hundreds of kilobytes of memory that has to be swapped for each operation. And that is really, really going to hurt. And there's actually a, a better solution for this. So, so if you have this pattern, what you're going to do instead is take what is known as the, the text builder. And there's a whole video on the text builder where I take some old code from NAV that is not performing very well. And then I use the text builder to make it many, many times faster. Um, and it's the same pattern here. So we have the text builder and then we append Eric. We got the text builder and append a space. We grab the text, whoa, the text builder and we append Hogarth. So what the text builder is doing is that it's saying, okay, he wants those three strings. So I'll just allocate three strings and remember them. And some other languages sometimes talk about a rope uh, as the data structure. So we kind of have three independent text strings and we're just roping them together in a line. So the output of this will not come until we, we go and do a text builder to either to text or we can simply add a format around it. Um, that will also give us the, the content. But at this point, it's adding those three together as a single operation rather than we are reallocating memory for each time. So big text and this pattern, there's a solution. If, it's, if the solution, uh, the purpose of big text is just to hold a, uh, a text, then the normal text string will hold just as much uh, uh, text as a big text i think and but but and you might get confused and i think there's a bug in the documentation of big text because big text states that there can be two billion characters corresponding to two gigabytes but it the other in the other warning it also states that the big text are backed by a string and the string is a maximum of of a one billion characters but they are 16 bits, so they, that corresponds to two gigabytes, which is the the uh, .NET limitation. So I think this documentation is wrong. So if somebody from Microsoft is watching, then they can uh, let me know in the comments below if I'm right or wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, so if your reason for using the, the big text is size, then there's no reason to to go there because if we look at what we can do with a normal string then we have all the fancy features because this is just a string and it can be passed in the web service and everything uh, like that but a, a big text you're reduced to just a couple of functions so if that's the reason to use big text that's not a reason just use the text instead so the third reason i have seen people still using big text is that Big text has the 
the read and the write functions uh, connected to um, to streams. So let's say we have a a uh, an an in stream and oops and let's say we also have an out stream. So then you would do read from the in stream and then that will read the content of the in stream into the big text. But that is the exact same thing as we, if we did a in stream dot read or read text into a text variable. Same result, these two statements. So, and the, the opposite, of course, if we do write to an outstream or we go outstream, wow, write the text variable, same result. And if you're confused about the in and out, uh, there's a video on streams. There's also a video called in, out, read, write, uh, confusion, strange directions, something like that, where I try to make heads and tails of commands that are pointing in opposite uh, directions. Uh, so you can also go check that one out. There's a lot of videos. Um, so that's not a reason to use uh, a big text either. So when we go back and take a look at this thing and say, okay, so what is the purpose of using a big text today? Well, I think there's only one purpose and that is to stay compatible with old code. So code from the nav era, that does still a bunch of big text variables around in the base app and so on, and still have to work. But there's no reason to use a big text variable in new code. And if you think I'm wrong, then I would love to, to hear it hear from you down in, in the uh, in the comments um, because I have not found any reasons for it. And it for 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 me it more looks like that you're painting yourself into a corner by using it because suddenly you're limited in what you can pass from in and out of function and web services and stuff like that. So I don't use it. I never use big text anymore. There's no reason for it. There used to be, just not anymore. Um, so let me know in the comments below uh, what you think about big text. And uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.